Hey, are you looking to add some extra power to your emergency or off-grid setup? Today I'm going to check out one of the coolest new solar generators in the market, so hang out for a minute and check this thing out. What's up guys, Eric here from At Home in the Future. We check out the latest gear and gadgets for life's adventures. Hey, before we get going with this video, I wanna let you know that Geniverse sent this solar generator for me to check out at my request, but everything you're gonna see in this review is totally honest and my actual opinion, so let's get to it. If you're like me, you've probably been wanting to check out a solar generator for a while now, but have been kind of waiting for the market to mature a little bit. Uh, I've been waiting for the battery tech to get better and last more cycles, I've been waiting for more capability, um, and just all around better reliability going forward. And that's what leads me to Geniverse's Home Power Pro C. Series. So the Home Power Pro is kind of like a next generation like off-grid power product and that's for a few different reasons. The first is it uses kind of the brand new state-of-the-art uh, live PO4 battery technology and that means unlike some of the other batteries that only charge a few hundred cycles this thing can actually recharge at like hundred percent for over 3,000 cycles and last a super long time so that's really cool. Another advantage is these batteries actually charge crazy fast both with solar and especially if you can plug it in just to your house to charge it up. Not to mention the solar panel that Geniverse actually includes with their kits, which are really cool. Each one of them is about 200 watts, but they claim to be almost 50% more efficient than like the old style panels that were glass and everything. And we're gonna talk about that more in this review. But first, let's go over the model I'm checking out today, and that is the Home Power One Pro. Now this is their smaller Life PO4 battery, but has lots of really great features. It's got uh, 1,210 watt hour capacity. It can handle up to a 2,400 watt surge. It's got that crazy fast charging we talked about. Super, super awesome. Now their claim is that this battery can handle up to 99% of the home appliances that you want to throw at it and we'll test out some of those claims later on in this video. As far as unboxing and setup goes there's really not a whole lot to say here. Um, all the components came into some pretty large um, and really nicely packed boxes of course. Lots of protective layers and everything because these are some sensitive components that you obviously don't want to see damaged in shipping but really getting things going was as simple as taking stuff out of the box, peeling off a few stickers and everything and just following the instructions to get going with stuff. I will say the battery itself weighs about 35 pounds so uh, not the lightest thing in the world, but also not quite as heavy as I expected it to be. I guess that's because of its uh, 1200 watt hour capacity. If you get a larger battery, those tend to weigh more. Now I ordered two of the 200 watt solar panels with mine, which come in this fairly large size uh, carrying case for both of them. Now I will say that these panels, although they're only about 20 pounds a piece, for some reason they feel a little bit heavier to carry than the battery itself. I'm not sure if it's because you're getting a two-handed grip on the battery and just kind of one arm on the panels, but something worth knowing. All in all, still pretty portable as long as you're used to carrying stuff at all. One more thing worth mentioning as far as setup goes is that Geniverse actually does provide an app that coordinates with the battery itself, which may or may not be cool to you depending on how you actually want to use this thing. Setup was pretty simple, although I did run into a few quick caveats. It requires a 2.4 gigahertz wireless network and it requires kind of a short Wi-Fi password. I actually had to set up a guest network in order to connect to the battery. Uh, but once you're all set up, you get access to a few special controls and remotely you can turn on the different power ports and everything. Uh, if you want to tweak some controls, it's pretty useful for me since you have to have Wi-Fi enabled if you're off grid somewhere. I don't think the app is going to be all that useful for me and I actually ended up turning the Wi-Fi feature off as I found it was kind of like a parasitic drain on the battery over time just in the background staying connected to Wi-Fi but still something cool to know if you're interested in that side of things. Okay let's get into the meat and potatoes of this review charging and actually using the thing. First up let's talk about charging for a minute because I think there actually is a lot to say here. Uh, first and foremost this comes with a few different cables and everything you can use to charge it from charging from your car or from a wall outlet. I will say with a wall outlet this thing absolutely blew me away. Now, you may be thinking of charging different gadgets or uh, maybe a portable battery bank you have at home already. And those typically take, you know, with a phone or with a portable battery bank, a few hours to kind of top off for a battery that's that small. Again, this whole thing is basically just a giant battery cell. Um, I was shocked with that Life PO4 tech and the charging controllers they had inside of this. Plugging it into a wall outlet, this thing took an hour and a half to charge from completely empty at zero from the factory all the way up to 100%, which is absolutely astounding. So if you just have quick access to power and need to plug it in, that's absolutely the way to go to get it topped off and ready to use down the line. Now, solar charging is the part of using this thing that you're probably the most interested in. And I found it to be super effective as long as you have enough panels. First and foremost, the panels that came with this are awesome. They're rated for 200 watts each. They are fairly large. Like I mentioned, they weigh about 20 pounds or so, although they start in about a two and a half foot square. So they actually fold out to almost seven feet long and setting them up is actually pretty simple. It only takes about 30 seconds you can probably go faster once you get used to it, but it just involves setting them down on the ground, folding them out, just getting them to the right angle of the sun. So pretty easy to set up, and then just run one cable that comes with the package, the solar generator. Now I'll order the package that has two different panels. You can go as many as four panels with this for up to 800 watts of charging. But I had a 400 watt charging setup with this, which just involved running two K 
cables to the back of the unit. So the big question is, is how efficient are those panels? Are they really pulling in that much power from the sun? Now, each of the panels I have are rated at 200 watts. And on a really sunny day, barely a cloud in the sky, having them angled at the sun, I found most of the time I was getting about maybe 150 watts each, maybe 120 watts each, uh, just depending on the power of the sun. So in my mind, unless you're like in the desert and just getting cooked by the sun, you may not ever hit that 200 watt limit per panel, but still that amount of sun was enough to get me charged up plenty fast. So the claim is you can charge this unit in three to four hours, probably if you have all four panels hooked up to it. Like I said, I had two and I found that I got from zero to a full charge in about seven or eight hours, again, depending on the sun. So personally, I would say as long as you have it out in the sun all day, you can get a full charge on it. Now, I would say you probably need to have at least two panels. I wouldn't just go buy a one panel package. And if you're getting the larger battery, you probably want more panels if you want to reasonably charge it on one sunny day. But of course, how many panels you purchase is ultimately up to you. And by the way, as far as weather goes, those panels are like IPX67, I think, which means they can be out in the rain or in a little bit of water. You probably don't want to leave them out all night, but chances are the panels are going to be reasonably close to the generator too. And I don't think you want to get this thing wet at all. You may end up even wanting to get some longer cords, but the panels can take a beat a little bit in the weather which is a nice feature. Real quick, let's talk about how the solar generator actually works because it's actually pretty straightforward. It comes with this big display here in the front. You can see the charging capacity here. Um, when you're outside with this thing and actually using it, if you have a solar panel connected to the side, you're gonna see the charging status over here and how long it takes to get to full. On the right side, when you have anything plugged in, you're gonna see the wattage it's using, how much life is left in the battery because of that. And obviously your little battery meter over here is gonna kind of go down over time as you use stuff or go up as you're charging it. Uh, to actually use the ports and everything, you can turn them on with a simple tap here. So I just turn on my power ports over in the side. And again, you can see their power rating right below you. If you wanna use the DC ports on the left, you can turn those on with a quick tap too. And you have USB-A ports and also USB-C, uh, which is really cool. You even have access to this light that's built in on the front. Now you probably already have lights that you would wanna use, but a quick tap will turn it on. Another tap will get it over to a bright mode and then a tap past that will I think blink kind of an emergency signal for you too. And you just tap that to turn it off. And one more quick thing to note here, if you have an outdoor device that uses like a cigarette lighter adapter, uh, you can actually get adapters for this online that you can plug into one of these ports. Um, I had pretty good success using that with some of my devices, especially like charging power banks and stuff. I couldn't quite get an air compressor to work with it that was supposed to be powered off that cigarette lighter adapter. As far as those things go, if you have like a portable fridge or something, you'll probably be good to go as long as you get an adapter for one of these ports. So what can this actually power? Does it actually live up to their claims of being able to power up to like 99% of the devices in your home? Well, the answer is, I think that kind of depends on what you're looking for, especially in a battery this size. Like I mentioned, this is the lower size battery in the range. There's also a Home Power 2 Pro. Uh, this one is rated for 1,210 watt hours. So it's got a lot of oomph in it to power a lot of things, but maybe not some of the larger devices for very long. Uh, as far as small devices go, so think phones, think tablets, uh, think drones, um, anything smaller or rechargeable, even like lanterns and camping lights and that sort of thing. If they have like a smaller battery, or maybe it's an item that you're used to recharging via USB, then this thing in my mind almost offers unlimited power for those things. So if you're buying something like this for an emergency setup or you need some backup power for your phone, I mean, probably dozens and dozens of times you're gonna be able to charge that thing. I had it hooked up to my phone, uh, to my laptop, to my iPad, to some drone batteries and stuff I had. It just charges up all those things, barely even taking percentages off its storage capacity. So as far as small stuff goes, I think you're totally set with a battery like this. So let's kick things up a notch to some medium-sized devices. So what I'm thinking here is like power tool batteries, e-bikes, maybe some kitchen appliances, the smaller ones. This has more than enough power for that. I was able to charge up my e-bike battery, no problem, just plug it up. Uh, again, it takes maybe, you know, a few percentage points off of here and it charged it up great. Uh, if you're going off grid somewhere or to a job site or camping and need access to power tools, this is an awesome option to keep those charged or even to plug them in directly. Has plenty of juice for that sort of thing. Uh, when you move into the kitchen, think about devices like a blender or a toaster or a coffee maker. Uh, again, they have a whole list of the website of how long it's supposed to power each of these things. But I found if you're in an emergency situation where you can get this thing charged every day with solar or something, you should have more than enough battery during the day to like live your life with those medium sized devices and the small stuff. This worked great for me with a blender. It's only when you move up to the larger size stuff, I think you kind of find the limits of this particular model. So for me, I tried this on a few different things. Uh, I was over at my parents' house. Our fridge is kind of hard to get out, so I didn't want to test with ours. Uh, but my parents have a fridge where I could get close to the cord really easy. But I found that it would keep their fridge going, probably in an emergency situation, maybe 10 hours or so, just depending on how much wattage it charges. Fridges tend to like ramp up and cool things down and then have a low power draw, then go up again. 
Uh, but I saw maybe 10 hours or so in that. Uh, there's also a freezer in their garage. Uh, same situation, it'll probably last a little bit longer, 12 or 15 hours. I tried testing this with a few other things like a microwave in my kitchen. I did find that my model microwave is actually pulling enough amps that it actually shut the battery off as a protective measure. But if you have a smaller microwave, you'd probably be fine. I even tried this out in stuff that uh, a normal person would in no way think of for using this for. It's stuff like a space heater, which is just super high wattage. It's gonna drain anything super fast. 500 watt space heater with this thing lasted about two hours, as you'd expect. Uh, again, if you had a bigger battery capacity, you could do a lot more things with it. If you're looking for a solution that's gonna be able to power these giant appliances, plus charge up all your other stuff at the same time, you probably want a bigger battery capacity or maybe even multiple batteries to be able to pull that off. But as far as powering stuff off grid or just in a small emergency scenario, this thing will more than get the job done. One more quick thing to mention here is how long the battery actually keeps its charge. And again, this is an advantage of that Life PO4 battery technology. So when you power this thing up, if you put it on a shelf in your garage, it should hold a full charge for about a year, maybe a little longer just depending on how you're storing it. It's something you can charge up to the capacity and then keep on a shelf until you really need it. And that's a lot of peace of mind to have. All right, the big question here, is the Geniverse Home Power Pro actually worth it? I would say yes. Now, when you look at the price for this, the battery itself goes for retail price of around $14.99. Again, you can find sales and you can also find like discounted packages if you wanna buy some solar panels and stuff with it. As far as these new style batteries go in the market and other competing products that have that Life PO4 technology and all the charging cycles and that fast charging tech, that price is right in the middle of where it needs to be. So it's a really good deal. Geniverse also has unbelievably good tech support. They got back to me super quick the few questions I had and they also have a pretty unbelievable five-year warranty, which is more than just about any other brand that I can find in the market, so you know you can depend on this thing. In my mind, if you're a prepper, if you're a camper, or you're just somebody looking to have some reliable off-grid power adventures, you'd be hard-pressed to find a better product in the market, and I'd snatch one of these up right away. Now, if you're somebody who's looking to power like more things in your house, or larger items, or a ton of different things at once, you're gonna need a larger size battery, maybe the two model, or maybe even multiple batteries to pull that off, but all in all, battery technology for solar generators has come a long way, and what Geniverse is offering here is, I think, at the top of the stack. So that's it for this this review. I hope it was helpful for you. Hey, if you dug this video, be sure to hit the like button because it helps the channel out a ton and subscribe if you want to see more reviews and cool stuff like this down the line. We'll see you next time.